Well, hi again. It's me, MI Wilderness. I just got done combing this area for King Bolete, and I didn't find any. But uh, I wanted to take a minute and show you some of the resources I use for preliminary identification of wild edibles. And those are my field guides. I don't always carry these with me. But if I'm out and about and I'm on an identification mission, these are the three books I keep on hand. Trees of Michigan by Stan Tequila. This is a good book. This is a nice small book, so it makes a good field guide. It's, it's well organized. It doesn't list every single tree, but it lists enough and it lists all the common ones. I think this would be a good book for anybody in the northeast part of the country or the Midwest. Uh, a lot of the trees are the same. We have a really good mix of trees here in Michigan. Uh, but this is a short, concise book. It has pictures of each tree shows some of the features and gives a, uh, a brief but somewhat detailed description of the trees and in some cases the uses. So that's my field guide for trees. Uh, it's what I've used for preliminary identification of every tree that I know and I know quite a few now. Uh, this is my mushroom hunting field guide. National Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Mushrooms by Gary H. Linkoff Knopf. I don't know what Knopf is. I don't know if that's an author or the publisher or what, but it's a great book. It lists pretty much every mushroom in North America. I'm sure it leaves out a few, but it lists all the common edible ones. And it gives a fairly good description and it uh, gives a good idea of what some of the poisonous lookalikes might be. It's organized by visual identification, uh, which is real nice if you're in the field because if you see a mushroom that has gills that run down the stem, there's a section for that. Or if there's a mushroom that has spongy pores instead of gills there's a section for that there's a section for shelf mushrooms that grow on the side of the trees it's pretty good it's a nice quick reference for the field but i always do with all these field guides i do a follow-up with more detailed books online resources local foragers etc etc uh, to make sure uh, the mushroom or plant or tree is what I think it is. Don't just use these field guides as your sole source of identification is the point I'm making. Uh, the plant book I use, Peterson's Field Guide to Edible Wild Plants of Eastern and Central North America. This is my least favorite of the three books. Um, I don't like the organization and there are some discrepancies, some inaccuracies, um, it gives line drawings, very rough line drawings and very brief descriptions of the uses of plants. It doesn't give a lot of information on poisonous lookalikes, which is a huge flaw for a plant identification book. Before I eat any plant, I want to know if it has imposters that look similar but may be poisonous, you know. And a lot of plants and mushrooms and trees do. They have other species that look similar to them. And if you just rely on one source for your information, it's likely you will gather an imposter, a lookalike, instead of the plant or mushroom that you're intending 
and you could poison yourself. But all three books combined fit in my hand and probably weigh a pound or two, so it's nice nice thing to have in my little day pack when I'm out on a mission of identification. Those are my, I think those are the three best field guides. Um, perhaps the only three field guides that I've ran into, but I'm sure there's others, but I think those three are the best. Especially, especially the National Audubon book on mushrooms. It's right there at the top of the list. But like I said, with all three, you know, I'll use those as my field guide and that will help me narrow it down and then when I get home I'll do more research online or with other more detailed books or local foragers or what have you to narrow it down even further and then uh, that helps me get more familiar with the plants but that's pretty much it I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the field guys I use and maybe a little bit of an idea of the the process I go through for identification and I'm gonna get back to hunting mushrooms I'm on a mushroom hunting trip today I combed this spot for the King Bolites and didn't find but a few old ones so now I'm gonna go on and uh, I have another spot where some cinnabar chanterelles grow and I'm gonna see how they're doing so I'll talk to you later